Hello and welcome back to Tesla News. My name is Marian and I'm your host today and we start the first news with the sign recognition and then we will look into the 4680 production update because there's news from Germany. So first of all, we will look into the sign recognition, a big, big topic in Europe. So for all United States people or US citizen, you might not have this issue too much. But for us, it is very important because we might have an issue um, moving with a car into a sign which is indicating 50 kilometers per hour but the car is not recognizing that soon enough. Um, it is just recognizing it once it is at the sign. So you're driving faster into that corridor where you're allowed to drive 50 kilometers per hour. And that is the issue. So it needs to recognize the sign earlier to slow down towards that sign. So um, Tesla is supposed to work on that. That is what the um, owners club in the UK is now um, saying. So that is very, very good news for European owners of a Tesla. And then we are looking into the 4680 salts. We have here um, a picture of a Prüm. So Prüm is a location where the production of um, machines for the production side in Grünheide is done. And it looks like that they use the 4680 salts here to test the machines, to get everything ready, to see if the machines are actually capable of doing their work. And then they package them up, then they move them to Grünheide, to the battery factory, which is looking more and more um, yeah, ready. It looks like the building is getting along. It is all getting um, prepared for inside um, to be ready and get the production going. So again, guys, it will still take some time, not being too um, positive thinking here yet, but I think by the end of the year, we might see some low production happening here. Then looking into the revenue and operating cost, um, operating cost just slightly increasing over time, but the revenue going through the moon, um, that is a good sign as well. And for the cost perspective in general, I think once we have the 4680 cells working, reducing the cost with the scale of production in Austin and in Grünheide at some point, um, we will see even more um, cost-driven, more cost-effective production of Tesla. And that is very important. I do believe that Tesla will be able to further scale. And then at some point, at some point where maybe the competition and other car makers having more products on the market, if at any case Tesla has to do something at prices in like six, seven, eight years, then they would have a lot of possibilities just based on the margin they have on each car. Then the Theban and the Glovis Splendor are on their way. Glovis is now passing into the Indian Ocean and the Theban is passing by Taiwan. I do expect more ships to come, by the way, as the production is currently at a daily rate of 1,200 cars, round about that margin. So I think that Tesla might have to do that production numbers per day until the end of the month. And then afterwards, um, the production might be increased again. Um, this is due to suppliers as well. Um, the suppliers are currently working at the same level of production capacity um, as Tesla does. This is what Moneyball was talking about here. Um, Tesla is right now at 45 and the supply chain companies are currently at around about 50%. So there's still a little room about that, but um, I think um, we can be happy that currently production is happening with um, 1,200 cars, 1,300 cars per day. And this is close to the number mentioned here from Moneyball. So um, very important um, numbers could be affecting as well um, Q2 um, if Tesla is able to ramp up further by the end of this month. Then 4680 cell in China, that is interesting as well because they are starting to hire a lot of people and um, they want to look for battery technical program manager, battery cell engineer, battery safety engineer, design and manager intern. Um, so it would make a lot of sense for Tesla. It's actually no big surprise, but it would make a lot of sense for Tesla to have this 
4680 production happening in Shanghai, then you have Grünheide, then you have Austin, and then at some point Cato Road for Fremont. So that kind of makes a lot of sense. Fremont is a bit uh, of a different story. It's very hard to establish a battery um, factory on site there um, at the same location. Um, but I think um, it would be very wise for Tesla to have the 4680 production happening in China as well. And then adding on to that, you have Panasonic, maybe CATL at some point. Maybe LG is going to do that as well. Who knows? Um, so you have the battery suppliers that could start production in the next few years with the 4680 cell format. So again, this is actually all pretty good news here. Um, then an interesting point that I'm having a bit of um, yeah worry about because Elon is saying again that the 1 million users for the beta versions um, will be possible by the end of the year. But on the other hand, there are other people that are trying to track the FSD package take rate. And based on the take rate and based on um, numbers they have conducted, they're not even coming close to 1 million customers actually that bought the FSD package. So the question out there is, um, how can they achieve um, FSD beta um, 1 million people if there are actually not 1 million people that bought the FSD package? So please let me know what you think about that. I do have kind of some concerns um, if that is actually possible because the FSD beta take rate, um, FSD beta package rate um, take rate might be not too high right now as it doesn't offer too much, especially for people outside of the United States. Yeah, then we have some yeah cost uh, points here, Model Y, 330 miles in range, 14 cent dollars on peak at highest um, um, recorded supercharger price and the Model Y um, just in peak at home um, at 0.06 cents. So we do see it is very efficient to drive a Model Y. Um, even a Model 3 will be um, cheap as well compared to um, other car makers. Please, um, if you're from the United States, share your experience when it comes to gasoline prices. Um, they are pretty insane in Germany too. Um, I must say it stabilized a bit um, after the beginning of the war in the Ukraine, um, but still much higher than before the war. And so it's going to be a big topic um, also for the supercharging prices, which increased in Germany many times over the past five to six months. So thank you very much for being here today. I really appreciate your time and I wish you a wonderful day. So thank you very much for being here and um, see you tomorrow back here, hopefully. So thank you very much. Bye bye.